Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial of Plexus. Before I start, if you could please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Okay, so this is the Plexus software. Let's launch it. When launching the software, you have the, the create or open project. You have the option from creating a new project or choosing an existing one from here or from more files. Okay, let's create a new project. Here you have the general settings, the title of the project, the model plane strain or aximetry. Okay, this is aximetry for circular footings and circular plate. This is plane strain. The elements 15 nodes or 6 nodes. 15 nodes is more precise, but it takes more time to calculate. Here are the acceleration, we'll see them later. The dimensions, by default, the units in the program come by meter, kilonewton and day. The spacing of the grid and the interval, a number of intervals. The geometry dimensions, left 0, right 50, bottom 0, top 25, you can change them. I leave them this way. Okay, if you can see the grid has been created from 0 to 50 and from 0 to 25, like we uh, put in the grid dimension. Here is the selection tool. Okay, so this is the geometry line. It is used to draw the boundary of the place we are working in, of the soil. Hmm. I will draw a rectangular representing a section of the soil I'm working in. Deal? And let's say this, uh, this uh, ground is composed of two different soil. The first soil is uh, 10 meters deep, as you can see from 25 to 15. And the other soil is from 15 to 0, 15 meters deep. OK. These lines, geometry lines, are used to define the boundaries and the soil and the level of the soils. OK. This is the plate. You can draw footings from the plate, uh, the diaphragm wall, piles, everything that you will construct on the site, from concrete and stuff like that. OK. So let's say I have a pile here. OK. I want to excavate here. Uh, I want, uh, sorry, I want to excavate here and leave the soil and ground here. Okay. So I take a line. I'll draw the limit where I'll excavate. I'll excavate to, uh, let's say, uh, not 10 meters. Let's say I'll only ex uh, excavate for here. I'll only excavate this soil here. Okay, this is the hinge or rotating spring. Let's say I have another wall here, or it's just an example, and I choose to put a hinge. Here. Okay, now it's a hinge, it doesn't allow rotation. But if I toggle this circle on, now it's a rotation spring. In real life, it represents the torque, it's not used a lot. But it exists. You can put the spring stiffness here, the minimum moment and the maximum moments. Okay, let's delete them. This is the geogrid. The geogrid take tensile force only and not compress uh, compressive one. It doesn't take compression. It is used also to draw anchors. This is the interface. You draw the interface on the pile or the, or the wall or anything you're constructing. Okay, the, it has a sign of uh, minus and plus. The signs doesn't, uh, doesn't mean anything. The interface is put to uh, for the sharp edges here and all the wall. For calculation, it gives, uh, it gives a, pl a, plast a plasticity for the pile. And it gives him a real stiffness because we draw, we drawing it as a line. Okay, here is a node to node anchor. You can draw a pile with it. Uh, a anchor, sorry. Let's say I'm drawing an anchor. And here is the geogrid, the end of an anchor. Now I have my anchor here.
okay uh, here is a fixed end anchor the end to end uh, the node to node anchor and fixed anchor can take compressive force and tensile force here is the tunnel the types of tunnels here the radius and the center we'll see all these commands in detail later this is to put a standard fixity around the soil we are working on you should always use it this is a rotation fixity for beams and piles for them to not rotate in the x uh, in the x uh, in the x dimension here is the y and uh, the z dimension sorry here is the x here is the y and here is the z dimension we don't see it but it exists this uh, rotation fixity enables rotation in the z direction this is prescribed displacement we'll also see it later it's for displacement it's uh, rare cases here are the loads loads a loads b point load a point load b okay so a point load is not a point load when you put a point load let's say this is a wall it will be uh, not a point load on the wall it will be a linear uh, linear load in the z direction okay this is uh, the drain command we'll use it later this is the well the well is used for uh, for positive or negative flow of water and this is the material okay the material set is where we set the soil and the 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 pile or the wall uh, database let's say we're going to start with the soil you have the option of choosing from the global from the lesson group or creating a new soil here you put the name the model the general properties the permeability the parameters the interface for this time i will choose sand from here and uh, no that's and clay okay okay so in order to define the soil we must drag the material i'll put the clay here here and here sorry i'll put the sand here control z i'll put the sand here here and here i put the clay here okay so now i'll go to the set type of geogrid and uh, choose the grouty body and assign it to my geogrid here remember to always save your file okay now i go to plates and choose pile and assign it to my pile and then i'll go to anchors and assign a strut let's say okay so now we finish assigning our material let's say save now we can generate our mesh okay we've generated our mesh if you want a finer mesh here only on the pile you can go to mesh before you should select the pile shift and select select all the pile refine line now the mesh is refined on the pile then you go to initial condition choose the gamma of water and you're in the initial condition that's it for today's tutorial thank you for watching and i'll be seeing you in other tutorial about plexus thank you everyone